with the release of Persona Q2 New Cinema Labyrinth outside of Japan in June 2019, the end of the 3DS is finally here. I mean, GameFAQs has nothing listed for upcoming releases. If we can't trust them, who can we trust? Limited Run Games is jumping on the 3DS bandwagon now, which is cool, you know, better late than never, I suppose, but aside from them, I just can't see anybody else pumping out high-quality games for this thing. And I may have said some things along the lines of wanting the 3DS to be dead and no one should release games on this console anymore, what is Nintendo thinking? That may have led some people to assume that I think the 3DS is garbage, all of a sudden. I, I don't know how you could have possibly misconstrued that. But no, in all actuality, that couldn't be any further from the truth. The fact of the matter is, the Switch is doing incredibly well, and the Switch Lite is looking to capitalize on the purely portable market that the 3DS had for years. So to me, it just doesn't make any sense anymore to release big titles on the 3DS. Every console's time comes where it needs to ride off into the sunset, and for this little bad boy, that time is now. It just makes sense, every console goes through this, that's why when they release Just Dance on the Wii, and not the Wii U, everyone is super confused. Now I know Nintendo said that the Switch Lite isn't gonna replace the 3DS, but you gotta remember, this is the same company that said the DS wasn't gonna replace the Game Boy Advance. Oops. It is sorta of sad to see it all end, but now that we can start looking at the console retroactively, I can say with certainty that the 3DS is easily one of the top three consoles of all time, at least from Nintendo. Listen, having Garfield Kart on a console will do that to you. The Switch will finally have its time soon enough. Man, remember when the 3DS launched and everybody thought that the console was doomed beyond saving? Nice. Admittedly, considering the launch was as poor as it was, the 3DS was the first Nintendo console that I actively chose to not get when it first released. Nintendogs plus Cats, Steel Diver, a poor version of Super Monkey Ball, the millionth port of Rayman 2. Apparently Super Street Fighter 4 and Ghost Recon Shadow Wars are pretty good and considered hidden gems, but they're just not my thing. I did eventually go back and pick up Pilot Wings Resort, another one of the launch titles, a few years after it released, and uh... Yeah, yeah, no amount of squirrel suit would have made getting this at launch that much more exciting. Sure, the whole glasses-free 3D thing is cool, but if the games themselves aren't all that compelling, being able to see things pop out at the screen at you is only going to be interesting for so long. That 3D test when you boot up the console for the first time was like the most exciting thing that it provided for months. It also came with those AR cards that I'm pretty sure that we all used just once and then forgot about until this very moment. Things were so bad, only a few months in, Nintendo announced a massive price drop, making the console a whopping $80 cheaper. That's a pretty big deal, especially when you consider how poor the Wii U did and they only dropped the price of that by 50. But if you were an early adopter, or in Nintendo's words, a 3DS ambassador, and had one before the price drop, well then no worries, you now have access to 10 free NES games. Eh. And 10 free Game Boy Advance games. All right, now that's good, I'm totally on board. Metroid Fusion, WarioWare Inc., Zelda Minish Cap, Fire Emblem Sacred Stones, holy cow, what a lineup! Now don't get me wrong, I'm dying to play NES Open Tournament Golf as much as the next guy, but I'm actually pretty upset that I never had an Ambassador console to have those Game Boy Advance titles with me. Nintendo did promise that these games were going to be exclusive to early adopters, and I'll be damned. The console has one foot out the door and they've stuck to it. Man, you guys got- you guys got that cute little certificate too? Man, it's- it's- it's so not cool, but I want it anyway. By the end of 2011, and heading into 2012 though, that's when the console started picking up steam. And that's when I finally got mine, along with a Canadian version of Kid Icarus Uprising. Uh, I- I really don't know how I ended up with the Canadian version, but it was because of this that I learned that there's an extra little French label on a bunch of the 3DS games over there. So... You, you learn something new every day. The urge to play the brand new Kid Icarus game was just too strong for me, man. I could not believe that a game that looked like this was running on a portable system. There's a reason why this was the game that Nintendo highlighted when they first unveiled the 3DS. And it's not like that game was just a whole bunch of wow factor and that's it. Playing it nowadays, yeah, the game is still fantastic. It's just a bit painful on the hands. Holding the entire system with one hand to keep the other hand free to use the touchscreen wasn't one of Nintendo's best ideas, but if you're able to get through that, the game still comes highly recommended. To silence potential criticism, they did release the game with that stand thing that I'm pretty sure, like, nobody used. Everybody I know who played the game just preferred to deal with the actual pain. 
Super Mario 3D Land, Mario Kart 7, Star Fox 64 3D, Ocarina of Time 3D? Nintendo was certainly bringing out some big guns here that helped make the system more enticing, and having a large-scale Zelda game in the palm of your hands? That is super cool. Those other Nintendo games are fun, and if you did have the console, they were basically must-have purchases, but the reality was those games were coming out few and far between, and third-party offerings were pretty slim. Resident Evil Revelations, that was the huge one, and still, looking back, having a full Resident Evil experience on a handheld is incredibly impressive. After a few years and many 3DS games later, Revelations is still one of the best looking games on the console. I don't know how they made it look that good. I'm surprised they never took the time to use that engine to port Resident Evil 4 over to it too. They released that game on everything. Also, remember when they screwed up the side of the box and it said Resident Evil Revelations for a while? That was, that was a pretty good time. But even though there weren't a ton of options in terms of retail games, the eShop. Oh, the eShop. I have been wanting to talk about this for years. I absolutely adored the 3DS eShop. Yeah, the DSi had an online shop as well, and of course, I was always super hyped to re-experience Mario Clock. But the amount of quality smaller titles that released on 3DS was a source of consistent excitement. There are just so many great games and hidden gems for cheap on the service. I gotta talk about a few of them. Pushmo was an excellent puzzle game about pushing and pulling blocks, and it spurred a whole series of games. Dylan's Rolling Western is a super fun action tower defense game where you play as this sick looking armadillo trying to protect a town from evil rock monsters. This also started a new series. Mighty Switch Force 1 and 2 are great run and gun platformers with amazing soundtracks. Mutant Muds made great use of the system's 3D functionality, and the sequel, Super Challenge, made me want to snap my 3DS in half. That was fun. You got awesome ports of existing indie games like VV. VVVVV and Ika-chan, a game by the guy who made Cave Story. Gunman Clive literally appeared like out of nowhere one day and then just said, hey, I'm a fun Mega Man clone for like only $2. And then it outsold the mobile versions of the game, which was a great slap in the face to the journalists that were saying that mobile games are gonna kill the 3DS. Oh, how the tables have turned. Curse Bloosh happened. All right, now listen here. The rock falling down a well genre is going to be the greatest thing ever that's gonna take the world by storm. I promise you this. A lot of my time in the 3DS's early years were spent exclusively with content from the eShop. And not just for the original games, which again, there were plenty of, but for the virtual console as well. Even though the service was losing some appeal on the Wii, now Nintendo started re-releasing some Game Boy games for the first time ever, and it was so refreshing. Any console that has Donkey Kong 94 on it gets an okay in my book. With this new exposure to Game Boy games, I got to experience some hidden gems that I probably wouldn't have played otherwise. Avenging Spirit was pretty cool, Balloon Kid was neat. I remember when Shantae got re-released on it, that was a pretty big deal. It definitely beats spending... Yeah, no. They did release Game Gear and NES games on top of that, which was... kinda cool. This means that they got to re-release Sonic Blast again. That, that shouldn't have happened, but I was all in on the Game Boy games. I always loved the little border that you can throw on them too, made the games look a whole lot sharper, and they even had a 3D effect that pushes the screen into the Game Boy itself and makes the battery light pop up a bit. That's pretty damn neat. Eventually, Super Nintendo joined the fray as well. It sucked that Nintendo didn't have the foresight to make the original 3DS model powerful enough to play them, but hey, with a new model, I can play the original version of Donkey Kong Country 2, one of the best games of all time, on the go, and that is awesome. I enjoyed when companies 3 d ified some of their classic games too. We got the best version of Kirby's Adventure and the worst version of Urban Champion, truly the yin and yang of gaming. I'm also genuinely stunned that they never ported Virtual Boy games to the service as well. With the whole multi-layer setup that the entire console provided, they would have been perfect here. More people need to play Virtual Boy Wireland. This would have been the chance to finally bring that back. Oh, and Street Pass! That was another awesome feature! Keeping the 3DS in sleep mode and being able to interact with fellow 3DS consoles to unlock small bonuses in some of your games, as well as a bunch of content in the Street Pass Me Plaza. Oh man, it was so cool! Filling out those little puzzle pieces over the weeks, months, and years was so satisfying. And they also released a bunch of games for it. With these, you were able to use the data from the people that you Street Passed and play a multitude of titles. I put a ridiculous amount of time into Find Me. 
All of this to just get little hats for my Miis? I can't believe how addicting that was. I really dug the slot car rivals game where each new street pass gives your car some extra features and market crashers. That was another big one for me. Buying and selling virtual stocks with the advice of the people that you've only walked past and probably never spoken a word to? Surely this is something I'm gonna do in real life as well. I brought my 3DS with me everywhere. Knowing that my plaza was gonna be filled with a bunch of new people, that was half the fun of going outside. It actually kinda sucks that Street Pass doesn't exist in any capacity on the Switch. I know a lot of people choose to leave the Switch docked at all times, but it would be a neat benefit for those who did take it with them when going out and about. Especially with the Switch Lite, it would work perfectly on that. Also, how is the activity log not a thing on the Switch either? All of these games I've spent hours upon hours on and the Switch just kind of gives me a vague idea of how much time I've played. Meanwhile, the 3DS has listed every single thing I've ever done. It's fine, I know I'm like the only person actually upset about this, but I'll be the one to voice my opinions anyway. Oh, and when you blew into the microphone or tapped the underside of the console to make the little splash screens move? Man, there were so many cool things about the 3DS that were built right into the console that you can experience without even needing a game card inserted. This video so far has just been a bunch of fluff to get to the main point I want to talk about. The 3DS had a ton of games! The launch lineup may have been weak, but in the years following, oh man, 2013 has got to go down as one of Nintendo's strongest years for a single console. Fire Emblem Awakening, Animal Crossing New Leaf, Pokemon X and Y, The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon, holy cow, Nintendo killed it this year! All of these games were really fun, and they were definite big deals when they first released. And on top of that, we got sequels to Etrian Odyssey, Ace Attorney, Mario and Luigi, the better version of Donkey Kong Country Returns, the fun puzzle game Picross started showing up, and wouldn't, wouldn't stop showing up. I even picked up Brain Age Concentration Training that year. I was just happy to be buying more 3DS games. This was the turnaround of the century. In just one year's time, the 3DS went from potential flop to top selling system in America. Amazing. And then the hits just kept on giving, man. New Super Mario Bros. 2 was a fun time. Majora's Mask got the remake treatment. World Tour is one of the best entries in the Mario Golf series yet. Puzzle and Dragons was a nifty little puzzle game. Rhythm Heaven Mega Mix brought in mini games from the rest of the series and put it all in one package. Picross 3D, one of the best puzzle games the DS had to offer, got a really solid sequel. We got an excellent remake of Fire Emblem Gaiden with Echoes, Metroid Samus Returns, WarioWare Gold, the Professor Layton games, a fully fledged Super Smash Brothers, so many good games. And of course, Kirby. The little pink puffball just got so much love on this console. Triple Deluxe, Planet Robobot, Battle Royale, Extra Epic Yarn, like a half dozen eShop games, plenty of classics on the virtual console service. Listen, alright, I like Kirby a whole lot, this console was perfect for me. And there were so many hidden gems, it would take a while to go over every game that's gone under the radar, but I do want to talk about Ever Oasis in particular. This is a full-scale action RPG with really large world exploration, dungeons to conquer, a town to rebuild. This game is genuinely fantastic, and it did not get the appreciation that it should have. Yeah, not every Nintendo game was great. Metroid Prime Federation Force, Zelda Triforce Heroes, Paper Mario Sticker Star, Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, the Mario Party games. Remember when they said that the future of Chibi Robo was riding on the next game? And then Ziplash happened? Well, we did bring Fire Emblem back to life, I guess at the cost of a cute little robot. Rest in peace, little dude, didn't even stand a chance. Nintendo definitely did not bat 100 with this console, but what they did well, they did great. And if you loved RPGs, well oh baby, do you have a ton of choices. I never really had the time to play a lot of these, though I do have access to a lot of the more notable ones. The main RPG that I got into was Bravely Default, and I adore this game. It's a modern RPG based on the mechanics and tropes from all of the classics, all with a great art style and a fantastic soundtrack. It's honestly one of the better RPGs I've ever played. I never got around to fully completing it because the end of the game is... But hey, I'm still excited to eventually play the sequel, which is something I will probably be saying until the end of time. Aside from RPGs though, third party support was pretty weak. I mainly stuck to the first party titles throughout the entirety of the 3DS's life, so I really didn't know what options were available, so I conducted an experiment by asking my Twitter audience what some of their favorite or just the overall best third party 3DS games were that weren't RPGs, and uh, oh boy, the whole no RPG thing really threw people for a loop. Most of the worthwhile third-party games on the console seem to garner a pretty good reaction as the highest praise. 
For my rhythm game fix, I played a ton of Project Mirai, a Hatsune Miku game with incredibly catchy and pretty challenging J-pop music. Zero Escape, Virtue's Last Reward, easily one of my favorite visual novels of all time, that game is amazing. If you want a good old dozen plus hours of mind-bending plot with some escape room puzzles, this game is perfect for you. Professor Layton vs. Phoenix Wright, this is basically a fan fiction come to life, and while it's not amazing in the context of the two original series found within, this was still a super entertaining ride. And speaking of Professor Layton, Rhythm Thief is more or less a clone of the famous professor, except instead of puzzles, you do rhythm games instead. I would be so down for more of this in the future, look at this. This is amazing! There are also a bunch of River City games too, I was really surprised to find out just how active this franchise was on the 3DS. And Monster Hunter, of course, that was a big deal as well, probably some of the biggest third party games on the system, they were just never really my thing. The same goes for Yokai Watch, actually. I can't vouch for this one either, but I've seen many a hardcore fan give these games high praise, so that's still pretty awesome to see. It is undeniable that the 3DS has plenty of good third-party releases, but if you're on the lookout for more guaranteed great or fantastic games, you're probably sticking to first-party and RPGs. Throughout the final couple of years, the game releases were getting really slow, but there were still some great stuff. However, games eventually stopped utilizing 3D, the console's main selling point, and some couldn't even bother doing anything interesting with the bottom screen. The writing was on the wall, it's time to wrap up the 3DS's story. A game lineup that legends speak of, but as good as the library is, I still think the original DS has the edge when it comes to a wide variety of quality third-party titles. It's just a shame that that's the DS and not the 3DS. Oh yeah, the 3DS can play DS games too, like I said, one of the best consoles of all time. The multiple models can make picking one up for yourself a bit confusing, but any one that you choose, the 3DS is sure to provide a fantastic time. Or you could just be a maniac and buy multiple consoles just for the sake of it. My god, they made so many of these things! It is time to lay the 3DS to rest, but that doesn't mean I'm gonna stop playing it anytime soon. The amount of awesome games they have accessible on this console is staggering. The first party 3DS library, the third party DS library, the RPGs on both consoles, the virtual console, the eShop. There are so many good games that you can play on this. The 3DS is a damn good achievement for Nintendo. Damn, I love this thing. Now personally, and I know the Switch is doing super well, but that console has a huge mountain to climb if it wants to come anywhere near as close to the goodness of the 3DS. And Nintendo, I know you're listening, I got one word of advice for you that's going to send the success of the Switch to the stratosphere, to numbers that you've never seen before. You ready? Folders. The 3DS has had folders for years, it's nearing the end of 2019 and the Switch doesn't have folders. You remember when Nintendo used to be good? 